Today's podcast sponsor is Hubert Engineered Woods. And I want to talk to you about zip sheathing and why we use zip sheathing. I know you've heard me talk about it on the podcast before, but I thought let's just lay it out in the simplest of forms. Number one, when I install it properly, I tape the seams, I liquid flash the seams, I manage for water with my windows, I do, I, I use their products, I don't have to worry about water. There are times when we install drywall inside of a house and we don't have cladding on the outside because a no zip system is going to be waterproof. So that's number one. Number two, I can manage for air. So using zip system sheathing on the walls, my like last five houses we built were all below passive house uh, levels of air leakage. They were all below that 0.6 ACH 50. And we're not putting that much effort into air sealing. We're just making sure that we tape well, which we manage for water, we manage for air. And the last five houses that I built all had zip bar because that continuous insulation that comes adhered to the back of my zip sheathing that I'm already putting up and installing now I have continuous R value that I get the whole R6 or the R9 or R12, whatever it is, I don't see building any other way. It works for us. It can work for you. Make sure you go to huberwood.com and check them out. And Huber, thanks for sponsoring the podcast. Pete Yost here for the Unbuild It podcast. I'm the host for this week's episode entitled Tribute to Building Science Corporation. Of course, I'm here with my good buddy, Jake uh, Bruton. I love the bumble on him. Someone's name that you know. I almost made it through the whole introduction, but not quite. <laughs> yes, he did. And we're not doing it again. So who else is here? Uh, your name is pretty clear. Oh, Steve Basic. Thank you. Appreciate being here. So I'm taking the lead on this one because both Steve and I have kind of a special relationship to Building Science Corporation. But we thought it was really important if we had to pick out one firm or a couple of people that have done more to improve high performance building and promoting building science in the building community, you got to start with Joe Stebrick and Betsy Pettit. Don't you think, Steve? I agree. I agree. They're at the top of that pyramid. And we, I mean, I was, I had a career long before I was at Building Science Corporation starting in the year 2000. All that just means is that I, several times thought I understood how buildings worked, but really didn't until I got to Building Science Corporation. And Steve, you started pretty early in your career with John Betsy. Yeah. I mean, I was a couple of years out of college um, architecture school when I started there. So how did you get the position? So I got the job. Joe actually came to Wentworth where I went to school and gave a lecture. And Betsy was in the back of the room talking with a a gentleman who was the department head that was a a friend of mine um, at the time. And uh, Betsy had talked about, oh, we just got Building America and Joe is coming down from Canada. We're starting this company, Building Science Corporation, and we need, you know, some employees and architect and stuff like that. And he goes, you know, I, I think I got somebody that you should meet. And he called me and set up the meeting and I drove out to uh, meet Betsy and Joe and Got hired in their living room. Rest is history, huh? The rest so is history. When when you're uh, head of department at Wentworth Institute of Technology and Architecture, why do you think he picked you out as appropriate for building uh, size corporation? I mean, my whole time there, uh, the whole five years, we um, we we became good friends. But more importantly, he we didn't have a thesis program in Wentworth, hmm. and but when I went through the handbook. There was this, um, it wasn't critical, it, it might have been called the critical theory. Hmm. It was a course, but it, was a, it wasn't a course to be taught by teachers. It was a course that was uh, self, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it was, it was a course for yourself. Right. So sort of like an independent, independent study or something. Independent study course, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that was tuned to be attached to a thesis. So I went and when he was the department head, I said, hey, can I do this critical theory course? And he goes, yeah, he goes, you got to pick out an advisor and, and you know, somebody to, to work with you on that. And I said, okay, well, that's the second question. You know, do you want to do it? And he goes, yeah, sure, let's do it. And so we did it. And so we got to know each other very well because over that course of the year, it was a one-on-one class where I'd meet with him for like an hour a week. We'd talk about what I was doing and my thesis and 
all of that. So I did a true thesis hmm. project in a school that we didn't have one. So, and he was tied, he was tied to this whole world too, because if you, uh, do you guys know who Paulo Soleri was? Yeah. yeah. Right. So he was a student of Paulo Soleri and oh, actually wow. went and worked out at the uh, Prescott. Um, can't believe I don't remember the name of the place out there. Paulo Soleri's little world that he was building out in Prescott, Arizona. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, anyways, but I, I got the opportunity to meet Paulo Soleri once, too, cool. through him. Um, so, yeah, it was it was really cool. So but what anyways. was it like to start a building science corporation? And what was your employee number? I, so, the, yeah, I, I say number one, but there was a there was a quasi woman that worked there for just a really She was short kind of a of, woman or she was well, kind of an employee and she, she was, was a woman. an employee, <laughs> okay. but she was there. She was she was like a friend of Betsy trying to help out the situation gotcha. and then she just disappeared. So so I see. So theoretically, she was their first employee, but she worked like if it helps. Months. Joe refers to you as she works their first as, employee. Yeah, he, she left after three months, and she wasn't into the building science thing. She was trying to figure out. So l- let's put some context on this. So this was 1991 that you started to work with them. 19- no, because I graduated in '94. This was oh, okay. probably like ninety. 90- Six ish, ninety five, okay. ninety five, I think. Yeah. So, Joe and Betsy met at or an end or were actually married at one of the very first EBA conferences that was held in Boston, right? Yeah, and I think and that was, was like ninety three. Like yeah, this that stuff was before me. They were still in Brookline. We were working in their basement office. I was the only employee to work there. Um, because okay. when, when Stephanie, who got hired as the second employee, I remember her coming in for the interview and we were already at the bar. Okay. So I was the only in employee. That, yeah. I was the only employee that worked in the Brookline office. And so Betsy Pettit is a registered architect. Yes. And Joe is a professional engineer. At the time he was a PNG, not a PE. So he was a licensed Canadian engineer, not an American right. engineer. Right. But um, it's sort of like peanut butter and chocolate, right? Because the two of them together in a whole bunch of ways, one's an architect, one's an engineer. One is like this incredibly charismatic speaker. And the other is a very good, you know, in addition to being an architect of note, a really good administrator. Right. And so the two of them together, there was a whole lot of like thermonuclear fusion going on. Yeah. And and you got to remember, too, that they had just gotten awarded the Building America contract and everything that Joe was bringing to America, America wasn't aware of. Yeah. And so not only did he have to present it, get people to believe in it, but you had to get find a way. How are people going to accept this stuff? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because at the time we've been building for years the way we always did it. You know, I, I'm a framer. I frame the way my dad did. And now Joe comes in and says, Hey, let's question how you frame. <coughs> and it's like, you're, you're blowing these years of traditional lineage of information. And Joe, all of a sudden, you know. So when is, you first started to do drawings for them, did, did you work with both Joe and Betsy in terms of reviewing the plans in terms of continuous control layers? Yeah, they were. But Betsy, I mean, because we had the Building America contract, if I remember correctly, I mean, she had a ton of stuff that she had to do to just sort that out. Because you weren't there. Nathan wasn't there. So it was her and the whole Building America contract and graphics and, 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 and stuff like that. So it was, I worked pretty closely with Joe at the time. And Neil Moyer was... He, he was getting contracted to come in and out and do a bunch of different things. So I did a bunch of work with him. We did energy audits and we, we would get um, contracts to go to, like I said, down to Mississippi. And I would travel with him down there and we'd do stuff. And those that you don't know, I, I call Neil Moyer the godfather of the blower door. I know there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that know the blower sure. door and not a lot of people know Neil. But if I had a blower door question and had one person to ask, it yeah. would be Neil who I asked the question about the blower door. Real quick, before we move on from you guys going to Mississippi, if you run into Steve at a bar, 
Buy him a ginger ale and ask him to tell you <laughs> blower dooring in the, the southern half of the United States. The southern half of stories. affordable housing. Yeah, there there was some crazy stuff in Rosedale and Mantachi. And I mean, these are towns of like 400 people, 500 people, rural Mississippi. It uh, You can't yeah. tell those stories yeah. here, but no, they are that. definitely worth <laughs> uh, the hearing. Just going to get a haircut was a life-changing experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... It, this is hard to talk about because I thought I understood how buildings worked when I was a builder and remodeler with my brothers. Then I go to the research center and I think, oh man, I didn't know anything about the way that buildings work. And I was there for seven years. And then I ended up at Building Science Corporation and got my head handed to me all over again the third time by Joe and Betsy. You know what, you know what I, I find truly <coughs> um, heartfelt about working at Building Science Corporation is for me, it's kind of a two-headed monster because, and, and I think this is really hard to do, and we all experience people in our life that are like this, but Joe, Joe is certainly a wealth of knowledge, right, building science, but Joe is equally a wealth in leadership as well as a wealth in knowledge, and that's really hard to do. Mm-hmm. Like, you can be a, an extremely smart person. But like Joe would say, if you don't know how to deal with that intelligence, how to pass it on, how to ensure yeah. that it continues. How to even just make that sharing interesting. And how to make it interesting. And I think that, that so for me, working there was, a, was certainly a life-changing experience. Yeah. And, it, and it was both working with Joe and Betsy. But I, I think the, the, if you ask me what the biggest takeaways, I, yeah, obviously I get to learn building science. I got to work, walk with Joe. But more importantly, Joe showed me the importance of information transfer and, and that it's not ours. And anything that we created, probably we didn't think up. Mm. It's, it's just the next level of information of stuff that we've learned. And then somebody else is going to build upon that. So I, I called it in, in, in a recent post or something that we're curators of information. Mm-hmm. Right. So that it's ours to, to curate. And I think Joe truly believed he was the curator of information and that he was passing it on. But passing it on is the secret. And I and I tell everybody, Joe probably had the best mind when it came to taking the hardest complex things and just showing it to you as two plus two. Yeah. Distillation. Right? Yeah. yeah. He, he took calculus and made it an addition problem. Yeah. Right. And so you would sit there and you'd be able to see it really clearly. But I think the other, you know, we said that this is a tribute to Building Science Corporation. I mean, there's no doubt that Joe had several businesses before Building Science Corporation. And it wasn't until, you know, the peanut butter and the chocolate got together. Yes. Because Betsy, as president of Building Science Corporation, took care of all the things that Joe was not particularly Well, I've often good said, at. too, that Betsy's probably the best employer you'd ever want to work for. Like, you you don't have the things that you would worry about being an employee. Mm-hmm. You didn't have those worries yeah. working with Betsy. She was extremely sharp and knew how to run a company and knew how to do that. And 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 it's, it's, it's really interesting because not without going into, like, extreme depth, but you have a gentleman here that has a wealth of knowledge, believes he's a curator of knowledge and he should share it, and is willing to share it for free. <laughs> yeah. And you have his Somebody other else that half that they have that's saying, we have to pay the electric <laughs> bill, we have to pay these employees, we can't give it away for free. Yeah. We have to figure out where, how, is, the happy medium where is this happy medium. So that's their marriage. And, and, and they both you know, ended up, one an AIA fellow and the other... Uh, an ashray fellow, oh, so well deserved. You know, both at, at the top of their game in their own professions. Okay, so Steve's been there for a few years. Mm. You get hired on before Nathan, right? They found Nathan through you, or the other way around? Uh, they found me through Nathan in okay. a certain way. But but I, I do have to tell you the story about how Nathan and Joe found. I think each other. Nathan found BSC, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can see that. I met Nathan. <laughs> but, uh, Nathan, who Wait, is a, sorry, yeah, sorry, we should we yeah. should say Nathan Yost, yeah, one of Peter's older brothers, and he did a podcast with he us did. earlier. Go this back year to on the COVID number three or something. Yeah, he's a he's a pulmonologist. A well, he's a, heart. a pulmonary uh, medical doctor. Did his um, postgraduate work at the 
uh, Yale School of Medicine, um, you know, uh, knows more about pulmonary human health and therefore indoor air quality as it impacts. Um, he was always a frustrated builder. So he's got all these brothers in building, <laughs> building industry. What do you have to say builder? Nathan was just always frustrated. Let's just go with that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> he doesn't but, listen. So he, uh, he, he said, hey, Peter, there's a, uh, uh, the Affordable Comfort Conference, which he didn't know what it meant. They're coming to town, and I, I think I'm going to go and you know, see a bunch of the presentations. Who should I go see? And I said, well, let's take a look at the – and, of course, Joe Steber. Well, you got to go see Joe Steber. And there was a couple other speakers there. So Nathan goes and sits down in the back of the room where Joe is doing a pre presentation. And like Joe's been talking for five minutes, Nathan's hands go up, you know, and he has a question. And then another five minutes, and Nathan's hand go up and have a question. And, you know, Joe and his friend are like, who the hell are you? And you know, he goes, oh, my name's Nathan Yost. And Joe goes, oh, geez. Oh, that explains an awful lot. Um, but when Joe found out that Nathan had access to all the medical, medical literature related to human health and, and pulmonary function, he said, hey, Nathan, if you'll help me get access to that information, I'll be your conduit to understanding buildings. So for about a year, Joe would call Nathan and say, hey, I've got to go to Houston and look at a building. Want to go? And Nathan would go, hey, that's a great idea. And, and Joe, you know, they did it like a Vulcan mind meld or something so that Joe could get access to all the stuff that Nathan knew and vice versa. And that's when they hired Nathan to work at Building Science Corporation. So he was actually hired uh, maybe days before I was. But he was the connection because Nathan knew that I was um, – not ultimately all that happy at building green at the time. And it's because I'm a researcher at heart and not a journalist. And so Nathan, he said, I'm getting a little tired of hearing Joe and Betsy talk about what they need and could get from you. And a little tired of hearing about how you don't fit a building uh, green. So let's just cut to the chase. And that's when I went to work at Building Science Corporation. And our first trip together was... <laughs> <laughs> to Cleveland, Ohio, one day after 9-11. Yeah, so we had to drive out oh. and back because the airport was shut down. functioning. But we didn't really First want thing to we miss ever did the meeting and stuff. Um, I can't imagine driving from Boston to Cleveland with Peter. It was... <laughs> He actually, prior to... So you want to know the funny GPS. thing is? He slept more than I did, if you can believe it. Most of the way there. <laughs> I drove pretty much most of the way down and back. <laughs> Uh, which is okay. Um, okay, so uh, then you guys and Nathan, who else is at BSC at this point? Well, so you can't talk about building science corporation without talking about Coda Ueno. Yep. Um, and, you know, Coda Coda's is still at BSC, too. Still at BSC and um, just an amazing engineer. <laughs> I tell people, for those of you that don't know Coda, I have a simple <laughs> way of explaining Coda. Coda is the closest human being I know to a computer. <laughs> We like, hope that he would take I've that. sat through it's, two presentations yeah. from him and thought, he knows more than me, more than I ever will, and he is doing a better job interpreting and explaining this than anything I've ever talked about, but, even like what the shape of my own hand is. Hey, like the, the process, the process by which he maneuvers through life is incredible. Well, it, it, you know, it's really, the, one of the cool things about Coda is that he's a, very accomplished pianist, but I have seen him with a keyboard doing Excel spreadsheets pretty much the same way he plays piano. Okay. It's crazy. Uh, he's just uh, unbelievably, uh, his Intuitive. brain is connected to his hands in, in an amazing way. Yeah. Yeah. By no means are we trying to insult Coda, by, by no means. He's, he's, these are all terms of endearment. This yeah, is, this absolutely. Is exceptional. But one of the, one of the coolest things I think about working at, at, at BSC was I like, worked with Betsy and Joe, but it was everybody else that walked in the door too. As far as employees, I got to meet Coda, Peter, Peter, Nathan, Stephanie. I worked with Stephanie the longest cause she was the employee right after What's me. Stephanie's last name. Finnegan. I don't know Stephanie. I've never and, met her. Uh, so she's, she's the one that put all the builders guides yeah. together, that was water management yeah. guide, you know, all of the, the graphic stuff. If we put out pamphlets and stuff, which if you're going to do 
the graphic art for BSC, you have to know more about building science than most builders probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like but we sat right that, across from each other. So I did the base look. drawing and she colorized it and stuff. So we were like, should I make it this color or that color? Which was really great because I get complimented on my graphics all the time. But a lot of it was this birth of we're trying to put out information that nobody's ever seen and trying to like, it's not a drawing necessarily for construction. It's a drawing right. we're asking people to learn from. Yeah. And exactly. so yeah. they, they had to be drawn a certain way, like yeah. you said. And so I got to learn a lot on the graphic side of how to put a set of drawings together. And what does that detail, what should that detail really look like? Right. By working there. But, but going back to it is uh, aside from all the other people, Gus Hyandegord, John Straub, um, the John Shaw's buddy, Chris, I forget his last name. Um, um, Chris Schumacher. Chris Schumacher. Yeah. Um, the, all these people that would well, come in the door. Yeah. You and would share like, knowledge. And share knowledge. And, I mean, Gus Handegord was, for, for those of you that don't know, was one of Joe's mentors, right, that wrote the Building Science for a Northern Climate or something. For cold climate. For cold yeah. climate. Yeah. That, yeah. And, but, but so that, to, to me... It's not just that Joe and Betsy built Building Science Corporation. They built a building science community. When you talk about all the people who work through the door, Joe's attitude was, if you are passionate about buildings, I'm your brother, right? I mean, that was that, that's their general approach. And come and share. Oh, absolutely. Come and share. We're going to have a conference. We're going to have this. Come. We're having a okay, meeting. Okay, so let's come talk in. about summer camp then. Well, I was going to say, and then... You know, for them to build the community literally around a once a year event, the Building Science Symposium, Westford, Westford, uh, or, yeah, how's yeah, it the, phrased? It, it's the Western Symposium, uh, Westford, Westford symposium, symposium, but it was also called the, the Building Science uh, Symposium. Um, when, when they did that the first time, they didn't know what it was going to become. They just, J Joe just said, Hey, I want to get together with some of my best friends. Cause the other thing about Joe and Betsy is there's not a whole lot of separate separation between their professional lives and their personal lives. So when people come, it's like, Hey, stay with us, you know, and it's, it's basically sort of a big party, but the heart of it is education, learning from other people. And that grew from, I mean, the first year probably was less than 50 people. Yeah, it's probably something like that, 50, 60 and people. And now it's five, eight, six, nine. Well, yeah. it's grown. Well, and it's said, at a limit, right? Because you, you, you could have 2,000 people there if you chose to. But I remember when Betsy said the limit was going to be like 250. And then she said it was going to be 500. And Joe just keeps inviting people and inviting people. And so let's talk about how summer camp, everybody calls it summer camp. Yeah. Summer camp works. I've been once... And then missed a couple of years and then COVID. And yeah. So I hope it kicks back <laughs> up at some point. Fingers crossed. Uh, it's three days. Yep. Everyone's in one room listening to one presentation at a time. And then, and it's, you know, some of the presentations are the whole morning or the whole afternoon. Some of them are an hour. Some of them are, you know, there's four presentations one afternoon, things like that. But everybody gets the same information. And then at the end of each day, Joe goes, see in my backyard, we're going to have a barbecue. Yep. And they have the entire thing turns into an evening party where everybody there sits or sits around and picks apart what was talked about that day and discusses it and builds takeaways. And well, the best food, the, the best booze and the best conversations you'll ever imagine. And, and so, you know, the rigor that they showed in their publications was coupled with just riotous uh, investigation and education at things like the, the science uh, symposium. So when you talk about a blend of all the right ways to, you know, do hard science, but just rip and fun and yeah. really get passionate. two glasses of whiskey and everybody so that they'll talk to each other without regard for yeah. people's feelings. And, and that they built a whole <laughs> community around that. It's really... Yeah. It's a it's an amazing thing. So the other thing about it is their website, because buildingscience.com. Way to snag the perfect website name too, buildingscience.com. Yeah, it's like to everybody else. But you know, just right. I used to say you know, to Joe and Betsy, like, 
How do you resist the pressure to commercialize this? I mean, they, they've had manufacturers crawling down their throats and in their back doors saying, you know, let us support the website. And Joe and Betsy have just said, you know, no, this is, we're going to keep this as an information resource. Yep. And I, you know, I know that Joe doesn't particularly like it, but I start a lot of presentation by saying that, you know, Joe is a, a building science socialist because, you know, his attitude is build the free, free yeah. information because we shouldn't be, you know, it's information. We have to make sure that's available to everybody. Curators. Curators, much better than social science or, or socialist. Yeah, that's much better. Curator. I get into more trouble with Joe than you do, I think. Well, I think it's hard for you to live in Vermont and not use the word socialist on a regular basis. <laughs> People's Republic of Vermont. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> so, yeah, there's just so many. You know, know without my Bernie Sanders mittens. <laughs> Sorry. So if you haven't spent a lot of time on buildingscience.com, you know, it is one yeah. of the all time. I always resources. tell everybody go there and read it and then read it again so you can understand it. Yeah, absolutely. Because there is that much information where if you read it the first time, you're not doing the website justice. If, okay. So full disclosure, what I do is I read it and then I print it. And then I come back to it in a couple of days wow. because I'll forget to go back to make sure that I understand there's a on my desk right now in my office is an article about phase change materials that I'm trying to understand that I still don't understand, but I'm trying to understand. And then, you know, very interestingly, some years ago, as part of Joe's relationship with ASHRAE, he started to do his ASHRAE insights, which, you know, I'm sure there are engineer members of ASHRAE that just roll over in their beds or their graves because he's such an irreverent writer. Um, but it's also probably the most popular part of any of the publications ASHRAE has. Yep. He also, they also do two day learning events as well, yep. which was my introduction to him. I think you told me right when we first started hanging out, like if I was looking for some place to catch stuff that wasn't a conference, mm -hmm. uh, and I went to one of their, one of their two day things and I was just like, holy cow, this was like the biggest information dump that I'd had in a two day learning environment ever. There's a, uh, I just found this the other day, stumbled across it, Joe doing a presentation, I think in New Zealand a couple years ago. And I thought, yeah, it'd be kind of good to see Joe I, with the attitude, like, and there's not a whole lot probably I can learn from Joe at this point. And it was so embarrassing because, and it's not that it's not that this is what you were getting to Steve. It's not that Joe's just brilliant. It's the distillation, you know, he, he has a way of, um, and it's not just taking complicated concepts and making them simple. It's the, it's the, it's the way he talks into a deeper to topic. He, he knows exactly where he's going, even though it seems like he's wandering, you know, that's one of the, the, the cool things. Um, so I, you know, pulled up this presentation from New Zealand and, you know, got sucked in and immediately started to learn things that I thought I understood. So, yeah, we, we, were, we were both really, well, we wouldn't have met each other, first of all, if we hadn't been both at Building Science Corporation, Aww. but um, we also would never have learned nearly as much as we have about buildings. Well, um, a, a, a little kind of behind the scenes, a couple things, like there's things Joe tells people and then there's things like you get to learn. Right. Like I remember we were doing this one building and, you know, Joe was talking about he, th he thought he knew where the leak was going to be and what the problem was and stuff. But we couldn't get the building to leak fast enough in the time frame. And we were left alone. He goes, I'll make this building leak. Damn it. So he went and got one of those like uh, garden sprayer jugs that's in line in the garden hose. We added a little bit of soap. Sprayed the wall because it. The soap acts like Factoring. a surfactant. The thing leaked in about three minutes, exactly <laughs> where he said it was going to leak. <laughs> right. So we found the leak. We just accelerated the testing process a little right. by making the building, making it a little easier. Which I wonder how many hours you have to stand watching a window not leak before you're like, mm, I can fix this. I can, I can make this can leak quicker. This. Or you're just like driving to, you know, we would do a lot of building investigations and he, I was fortunate to tag along. And on the way, he'd explain what the problem is. It's like, okay, we're not even at the building yet. You got a little bit of information. 
And then it's like we would walk in the door. I remember we were walking in the store. It was a public school. And he's asked the guy, are we, you know, do you operate the building under a positive or negative pressure? And it's like, oh, the guy's like, oh, definitely negative pressure. Um, you know, the, the building's totally negative pressure. We always operate under that. And, and Joe's like, yeah, pay attention when you walk in the front door. The like front door, you couldn't even push it open. The building was so overly positive. <laughs> and, uh, and so Joe, so like he's asking questions because he's not only trying to, to get information, but he's trying to validate how well does this guy know his building? Right, right. Right. Like, am I, is this somebody that I, it, it, he was just amazing because you're walking in and not only is Joe doing a building investigation, but he's really interviewing and qualifying this guy as, mm-hmm. is he worthy to be talking to about this problem? Yeah. Like, does he understand what's happening? And you're just sitting there going, yeah, this is just way too cool. Okay. Yeah. So that first seminar that I went with Joe, one of my biggest takeaways had to do with business and not building science. <laughs> And I still use it almost every time I visit a project. Uh, if I'm there to look like problem solving stuff, investigations. Uh, and he explained uh, a specific instance where he knew what the problem was going to be. And he said it was a large government building and they were paying him a lot of money to be there to take care of it. And uh, he had figured out what it was within like 30 seconds of being there. And still spent the whole day before saying, I think this is what, but the idea, but the idea that they'll get pissed off at you if you can solve it in 30 seconds and they're paying you a lot of money. But if it takes all day, you worked for it. You earned it. There's a line that goes with that. You know what it is? (laughs) No. Like you can't get the dough if you don't do the show. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yep. That's exactly what it is. (laughs) Right. You, you got to show them and then that, yeah, we're thinking about this and we're doing this and and all of that. But But that's a good business acumen takeaway. Like, well, the I think he was that, thorough too, right? He, yeah. was, he was always thorough. Oh, yeah. He just he knew what the problem was, but he would still validate and making sure that that was a problem. And um, yeah, it was just it, it was yeah, you know, life changing certainly. So, in positive yeah. driving forces for our industry and the overall good. Well, think about it. I mean, aside from Joe and Betsy, who in the last fifty years made the industry change direction in any way? Yeah. 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 So, so I was, was going to say, say I can think of manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can, can think of a lot of great people, people, all of whom were either going to the summer camp or presenting there. But I mean, did, he's did one of the few have people. The, he's one of the few people in our industry that you can use. You can identify him by his first name. Yeah. So yeah, that so says something. No. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard Joe say this. People right. know who Joe is. Yeah. So, so there's. And, and Joe, Joe would be, be the, the first, first to admit that it's a community that has built a base of knowledge. But uh, there's nobody besides Building Science Corporation that's had that much impact on the industry. It's really, it's really hats off, you know? Exactly. That's, that's the way exactly. It works. Thank you. Right? We're saying thank you. That's yeah. the whole point of this. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Joe and Betsy. Betsy. And now, well, second generation too, Right. I mean, I remember when Christine was running around the barn with my kids, like five or six years old, yeah. running around at Christmas and Thanksgiving parties and stuff. And now she's of course, we're talking about Christine Williamson, Joe's right. Building, Science, Building, Science, Building Fight Science Fight Club, Fight Club on, on Instagram. And, and uh, but yeah, and my daughter following in my footsteps and going to architecture school and stuff. So it's she's not in school anymore. Well, I'm saying go in our kitchen. Uh, she's still in school. school. <laughs> she's, she's still in school. Uh, but, but I think that's also a testament to, yeah. you know, all yeah. that stuff comes down out of the Joe and Betsy family tree. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So here, here. Buildingscience.com. Okay. Thank you for listening to the podcast today or watching it if, on, if you're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, click like, click subscribe. You can hit the little bell button so it will remind you uh, or warn you when we publish one. Uh, leave us a comment. Uh, let us know if you disagree with anything we said. I don't think this is one there's anything to disagree with. <laughs> you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to – I don't usually butt in. But I'm going to leave you I with do, this. Do we agree with that, that he doesn't usually butt in? He's on a roll. As an ode to Joe – I think everybody out there, if you have information, remember that you're a curator of it, not an owner of it. In an ode to Joe, pass that information on. Whether it's a success or a failure, we all need to learn from each other. 
And I think, you know, Joe is the number one leader and set that example for us to follow. Well said. Yeah, well said. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. Thanks for listening.